So we're in the shop now, we're gonna go collect some oil. So I'm gonna show you some pumps right now and the different options we have for collecting this oil. So this right here is a gear pump. It is electric in three phase. So that means I control it with this variable frequency drive right here. And I got a cover for the wires. I just haven't put that flume on yet. So with this pump, this is a gear style pump. That means that you got two gears. Um, one's gonna be about right here, one's gonna be down here. And those gears are going to suck this oil through and push it on down our hose, which in this case, it's connected to a centrifuge, which purifies oil. And with this motor, we're gonna have an output of between 40 to 50 gallons per hour of oil transfer with this unit. Um, honestly, it's a little slow when collecting oil from a mechanic shop. Um, the best case for this electric motor is to transfer oil between two containers in a shop. Um, I like it because it's very quiet versus a noisy gas pump like we have over here. Now, gas pumps are typically gonna be rotary. What does that mean? That means that this pump head right here is gonna be like a fan blade. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. And this is gonna move oil very fast. I can move about 100 gallons of oil in about 15, units, 15 minutes with this unit. Now, the one downside about this is that this pump is not self-priming. Gear pumps are self-priming. This one can uh, pick up oil from about, they say, six to nine feet of head. So this can suck oil pretty good. This one does not. So with this unit, you're gonna have to prime it when you first get it. Um, the best way to do that is by putting oil on this top of this cap right here. Just put some oil in there when you're collecting oil for the first time. And then you may have to get a primer. Um, that's something you use with trash pumps as a hose primer to suck oil through. It's also popular with firefighters when collecting water um, in wildland. Now, this pump came from Harbor Freight. You can get it for about $300. And this is a one inch coupling. Um, so remember that they got different sizes. The one inch is the cheapest one, it's the smallest one. And really that's all you need for transferring oil. Now for your hoses, you're gonna want rigid hoses on both sides, your input and your output. Uh, the reason for that is if you put a soft hose on that output, it's gonna be extremely difficult to control and the rigid hoses are just better able to handle the oil and they don't biodegrade as easily. Those soft hoses I have found, um, they break down pretty quick. Now, lift these hoses from Harbor Freight. You're gonna to wanna to put a valve on the end of this and this threading is not NPT. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna use this impact. I'm going to remove this. I'm gonna put this one inch NPT barb there. I'm then going to put this one inch valve in there. And then finally, a one inch coupling so that we can get that away from our hand. And then when you're out in the field, you can put a cap on this to keep oil in there and keep everything clean. Let's get to it.
This is the inside of a gear pump. This is the first casting. So this is our input oil and output oil. And we can see it's pretty simple. You just got some slots. And then this is the head. And we can see these are the two gears. And this one is free floating. And the way this works is oil is gonna come in. This top gear is turning and it's gonna suck the oil between these gears. And the oil is gonna go out. And then it'll go up our hose and off to where we need it, whether that's a centrifuge or another container. There's a couple of things you want when you're transferring oil at a mechanic shop. You want a good pair of pliers for your hoses on your pump um, and taking those caps on and off. You're gonna want some color cut in a stick. This is water finding paste. You can put this on a stick and dip it on the tank, which I'll show you there, so you know what the water level is in that container. You're gonna want some hand cleaner, and this is going to remove oil from your hands. This is one of the best products I've ever used. Um, it's called Goop. And you can get this from Harbor Freight for about 4 or $5. Then, of course, we're going to want a bunch of rags because you're going to want to wipe hoses down when you're pulling them out of tanks and to scrub your hands. Of course, you're going to want to wear some old or dirty clothes that you don't mind getting some oil on that I'm wearing now. So we're ready to go collect some oil. So right here, we have two style of drums. We have a sealed barrel on the left and then a barrel with the lid on the right. For moving oil from shops to my place, I like to use these sealed barrels. They have a two inch NBT uh, lid on it. You can unscrew this and you can put your hose in here to fill it up. Uh, what I like about these sealed barrels is they're extremely hardy. You don't have to worry about a lid popping off if you drop it and it's generally much safer um, just for transporting oil. With these barrels, having the lid is nice, especially if you're going to use a pressure style centrifuge to clean this oil. You can pull that lid on and off. You can clean the sludge out of it. But if you do have a lid with the barrel, you absolutely want to have one of these locks that can go on it so that lid does not pop off while transporting the oil. The oil drums I picked up are pretty cheap. I picked up both of those drums for $5 a piece and you can usually find them for pretty cheap or free in your area. If you know of any like spray foam insulation companies, you can talk to those owners, you can probably get a free barrel from them. Those red and gray barrels I got, that was for types A and B chemicals for that spray foam insulation, and it was just a guy selling them on the side. So those barrels, they're cheap, you can find them easy, and they're pretty light and durable for you to put in your truck and store oil. So I'm in town right now, I got these barrels strapped in. I'll show you in a moment when I get to the first shop how I strap these barrels in. It's pretty simple. And then we're going to go fill it up with some oil. I'm at a mechanic shop right now. I'm going to put my phone in my back pocket and see if I can get some free oil. Would it be alright if I collect some waste oil that has on the side? Oh, probably I have some. Why don't you get it? Okay, I will. Thank you. You're the same guy coming? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Not sure if you heard any of that, but he said I can collect his waste oil. So we're going to go take a look at this tank right now. This is back here. So you've got a bunch of engines. Got a container full of waste oil back here. Now this is why we, you want to have enough hoses because you can see my truck is all the way back behind there. We have a lot of trucks. Typically you want to have about 100 feet of hose. We can see it's a long run from these barrels to the barrel all the way back over there. But let's get this pump set up. We got the pump set up right now, but I don't have enough length of hose to get to my truck. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is what I have, so this is the end of the hose. That's my pump with the barrel back there. So since I have two barrels, I'm gonna put a barrel right here. I'm gonna fill it up, and then I'm gonna get my collection hose, and I'll move the oil from this tank to the one in the back of my truck. So I hate doing that, but for the video today, I'm gonna do it for y'all. So I got the barrel set up, now I'm going to pull the cap off the end of this hose, which I'll show you right now. Pull this cap off, off of this hose. I'm going to have to set this phone down. There we go. And these caps are so useful, we don't want to lose it. I'll put it on this board right here. Pull this top off. 
get our hose and we're gonna dip it in there. And I want it to be suspended about the middle of this container so I'm not pulling water off the bottom. That's the pump running. And this is the thing with gas pumps is the carburetor wouldn't start. So I had to pull the air cover off. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna open this drum up. And then I'm going to pull this cap off. See if it's open and it it's closed. You see that? I'm going to put it in here, just going to open it up. I don't have any oil yet, so I'm going to have to prime the thing. So our issue was just got stuck on the bottom. So we pull that up a little bit so it can breathe. Got it running. And that's straight oil. Look at that. Hard to tell in the shadow, but that's oil. We're just pumping oil away. There we go, that's a good video. Lots of oil been like three or four minutes and this barrel is almost completely full already filled up fast now you don't have a valve how are you gonna turn this off you're gonna have to run all the way to that motor and turn it off while this is spraying oil so this is why it's so nice to have a valve just turn it we're done we can come over here and turn this off We go now since we're playing hopscotch here I'm gonna have to pull the hose out of this container and then do the same thing to fill up the tank in my truck but we're gonna make it work remember that rag I mentioned we're gonna use it now This is why we have these caps. Make sure not to drop it into the container. There we go. Wipe it off real good so it's not a mess. Get this rag and put it inside a bag. Over here, it's just the same thing except for this valve on here, which makes it easy. Cut that off. And put a cap on it, which unfortunately I forgot my phone stand. But we can do this just like this. That's much easier when you have two hands. And just like that, we got it picked up. And it's not too heavy, but it does weigh quite a bit with all this oil in the lines. Got it pulling oil from this barrel into the truck. This is a painful lesson to not be stupid like me and uh, bring enough hose to the mechanic shop. Typically, I bring about three hoses. But I was in a rush today, so I only grabbed two. And this is what I ended up having to do. Make sure you have enough hoses when you're collecting oil. Down here in the south especially it's real easy to find waste oil up north it can be a little bit more difficult because the mechanic shops like to burn the waste oil in the winter time to stay warm but even then you can get a surplus of oil from them in the summertime and store it up for winter uh, so there's always a place you can find from 
find waste oil from. It's just a matter of talking to enough people and eventually a few people will say yes. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take our rag. Wish I had my camera, but I forgot my camera stand in the shop. And we just have to pull this off and clean it. And there we are, on to the next container. No point making you watch, but this is how I like to strap it. Cool. I just have them all the way up towards the end of my bed and I put a strap around them. And that's how I do it. And then depending on how bumpy the road is, if I'm going pretty far from town, I'll throw another strap on them around the top to keep them there. So just like that, we collected waste oil. As you saw, it's pretty simple. You're just transferring oil between two containers. You want to make sure you have rags to wipe your hoses down and you want to make sure you have a valve on your output hose and then caps to put on both sides to keep everything clean. So we're going to take this oil back to the shop. We're going to do the same thing of putting it in our settling container, which I'll speak about more in a minute. And then we'll show you the filtration process. Like I mentioned earlier, several things to note is when you're collecting oil, you can just do it randomly whenever you need it or you can set up accounts and just have a regular schedule of picking oil up from them. Some people like that, some people don't. Another thing to notice is whenever you're collecting oil to check for water, this had a lot of water in the container. Honestly, it was probably 150 gallons in this container. I would say half of it was probably water. That's not normal at all. Usually the bottom 10, 20% is gonna be water and then the rest of it is oil. So just make sure when you're collecting to you use that color cut product. I'll show you how to use it in the shop. Since I didn't have a camera stand, I couldn't show you over there at the moment, but we'll get to that here in a second. Color cut, you just put it on a stick, dip it, it turns red. And then when it turns red, that's where your water level is, so you can avoid it on collection. The nice thing about the water being at the bottom of those IBC totes is whenever you do settle it and you let that oil sit for several weeks or months even, all that water is going to be at the very bottom of the container. And once it's there, all you have to do is open up that valve, drain all the water off. You can dispose of it at a recycling center, an auto parts store, or use it for fire burner, fire starter, and go from there. So it's extremely simple. That's collecting oil. And now when we get back to the shop, we're going to show you how to filter it.